Hello, this is Rebecca Wengel in April Troglar. Today we will be exploring how to create a digital escape room in Google Forms. Google Forms is a web app that can be used to facilitate cross-curricular learning in so many ways. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell to enable notifications for our channel by clicking our logo during the video. Also, leave us a comment or check out our related videos by clicking the pop-up cards in the upper right corner. Here's how to get started with digital escape rooms in Google Forms. Prior to watching this video or starting your Google Form, you will want to have your main theme for the escape room. This will help build the story within your escape room more efficiently as you move throughout the sections. Questions you may want to consider during brainstorming are, maybe when will this be good to use? How is this beneficial to my students and myself? What kind of content is good to use for this? Should I use this for a review? Or should I use it to introduce new content? Recognize the main idea and story you want to tell. What content areas do you also want to connect? Once you have the solid framework for your escape room down, you will be ready to create your escape. April will now lead you in a tour of our escape room and helpful tools to use as you create your own. Thank you, Rebecca, for that introduction. I want to show you an example escape room. This is a Harlem Renaissance escape room that is art and music cross-curricular. Feel free to pause as I'm going through if you want to see more about our story. Now, an escape room really has three main components. You're going to have your story, you're going to have advancing questions that move students through the escape room, and you are going to have reteach sections. So, this is our first advancing question. I'm going to go ahead and choose an incorrect answer so you can see what I'm talking about for a reteach section. This is just a simple timeline. Students can study that, hit next, and then they're redirected back to the question so they can re-answer that correctly. Once they have the correct answer, they will move through the escape room and advance to the next section. Here's more story. Feel free to pause if you want to read more. We're giving students their main task here about a missing piece of artwork. And then we come to another advancing question. Now we are going to choose an answer and hit next. That happens to not be the correct answer. Once again, we've got another reteaching section. I did create these in uh, Canva online. So you can do that and then drop them right in here so students can have more resources to read through. Once again, they're gonna hit next and go right back to that same question again and we're hoping that that will help students find the correct answer. Now we're going to continue on to the next section in the escape room. Not all questions have to be advancing questions. Name two instruments that you see in the image. I'm just hoping students can type that in. That's not going to be an advancing question. And then once again, another advancing question. They can choose an answer for that. Oh, I got to put in this here. Once again, they're going to come to another reteaching section. So this is a great way to introduce new material. It's a great way to do review. So let's talk about how we're going to build it. You're going to start with a blank Google form. Some things I like to do before I even start is change the color. Students are very receptive to color. Uh, I try to keep my escape rooms themed in different colors so the students know it's something new. Then we're going to come up here to settings. And there's some things we need to make sure we do here. First of all, we're going to collect email addresses. If I'm having students work on this individually, I'm just going to collect email addresses. I don't even ask for their name because I can sort by their email address. Or, of course, you can um, work in pairs, and then you're going to want students to type that in. Um, if you're going to do two students on one device, make sure they're typing in the name so that you can see who's working together there. You're going to want to limit to one response. You're going to want to make sure that edit after submit is not checked. Do not check that. Come over here to the presentation tab. Do not check self, um, shuffle question order. You want to make sure that students are working through the escape room as you design it. Um, confirmation message. I like to give a little, um, a little shout out here to my kids when they finish. This is also a great place that you can um, give them some uh, next directions. So you're going to want to make sure you have some stretch materials for the students um, that finish early. So you can have them, please see Ms. T for your next assignment, so you can have them come up to the teacher to get whatever their next assignment is if they are doing this in person. We're going to make sure we hit save. Now, 
we are going to go ahead and start by creating four or five blank sections by choosing this add section at the bottom here. Here at the beginning you are going to want to set your story. This is where you're going to start building the world that your students are going to be working through. You can add images here. You can even add a header in the uh, in the first section here if you want to add pictures. You're going to want to give some description, get kids going so they know what the story is here and kind of immerse them in that world that makes it much more enjoyable and memorable for the students. So after you do that we're going to want to start with our advancing questions. There's two types of questions that work well for advancing questions, multiple choice and short answer. I'm going to show you multiple choice first. Before we get into the question we're going to want to go ahead and make our next section a reteach section. So this is where you're going to direct students to get that little bit of review and of course um, that will help students pick up the material that you're going through. So let's start with a simple question. What color is the sky? Just for an example. So I've got multiple choice. We're going to go with purple, green, blue, and orange. Okay, you're going to want to come down right away and make sure you've got your questions required. Make sure all your questions are required. So at this point we're going to click on those three dots and we're going to go to section based on answer. Right now it's going to just automatically continue to the next section. That's not necessarily what we're going to want to do. Even though the reteach section is our next section, I still like to go ahead and direct the, the incorrect answers to our reteach section specifically because as you add more you may find yourself inserting sections and things and we want to make sure we're going to the right spot. So. I've chosen to go to the reteach section for all of the incorrect answers. For the sake of argument, we're going to say blue is the right answer here. So blue, you're going to want to go to the next section in the escape room. You're going to go to the next section of your story. So I'm going to come back up here and make sure for blue, I have chosen the next section of the story for that question to go to. So the flow here is if students choose an incorrect answer, they're going to see whatever reteach material you add. You can add a video, you can add images, you can type things for students to read, and then they're going to come back to the question. Once they choose the correct answer, then they're going to move on to the next section of the story. You're going to continue to build your world, continue to task students with things for, to discover, to learn, to answer. Now, another type of reteach question that works really well is um, short answer. So you're going to choose short answer. And of course, we're going to choose required like always. And then we're going to type in our question. Um, let's do an easy one. What is Miss T's favorite color? Now, we are going to want to type please answer in all caps. And I'm going to show you why. This is where students are going to type in their answer. You're going to come down to our three dots again and you're going to choose response validation. Come over here and choose text. Even if you're having students type in a number, I still like to use text. It gives me more options here. We're going to leave it on contains. That's perfectly fine. Then we're going to type in our answer. Now, you know how students can do all kinds of crazy things with capitalization. So we don't want students to get frustrated because they know they have the right answer and it keeps telling them that they're wrong just because they've capitalized a letter when in the answer you did not because it needs to match up perfectly. All caps is a really easy way to fix that. So red is my favorite color. My students know that. Now on custom error text, you can re-ask the question. You can redirect students. So I would put something like look around the classroom. If we were in the room, they would be able to see that I have got tons of red stuff everywhere. I also like to put did you use all caps? because that may be the simple thing that they've forgotten. So then they can type in their answer as long as it matches perfectly with what's going on here. You, It will continue on. I'm going to go ahead and um, continue with our story in the next section. And I always once again like to make sure that I am physically directing them to the next section, not just relying on the form because if I just choose to insert something it could get a little confusing. So you can see how you can build in these questions to force students to um, look at some reteaching materials to also move them um, through the sections in the order that you like. I also at the end when they um, are successful 
just for me, I like to add a little linear scale here and get um, how students felt about um, this escape room. And so just give them one to five. That way you can get a gauge for how your students are. Um, you know, and you can tie it into your story like in the um, Harlem Renaissance there was a time traveling elevator was part of our story so we had them choose a floor to go to and that helped us to see how they felt um, about the escape room so this is just a great way for getting new material to the students your students that need accommodations can use speech to text when they're going through here and it gives you a chance to really um, have fun with your students so I hope you enjoy this and uh, good luck Now that you have completed your digital escape room, or at least built the framework on it, you want to start thinking about your final product. So what is your final product going to be? What do you want your escape room to lead into? Is this for prior knowledge before a project, or is this for view for an assessment? Could this be the groundwork for an art project, or music performance, or a writing assignment, or some type of math concept? So these are th things that you want to think about once you finalize your escape room. Having a final product to branch from for your escape room will reiterate standards and the content you want students to learn and remember from the escape room. The main idea of this activity is for the students and you as well to have fun. So happy creating. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, or reply to one of our other videos or share the playlist below. Subscribe to our channel and enable notifications so that you don't miss out on the next episode. Don't forget to check out our other resources and see what else is going on in Horry County Schools. Be sure to follow at Dear Disses on social media or contact us via email or our blog.